Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about two different variable scopes. Um, I got the primary arms one to eight, which I've had for about three years, and I've done lots of work and some videos on, and the Swamp Fox uh, one to 10 uh, that I got about a week ago, uh, and I'm still continuing to work with that, but I've already um, collected a whole bunch of very interesting information. So uh, at distance shooting, both of these scopes are gonna be very similar. Uh, because they both have a similar bullet drop compensator. Okay, uh, now on the on the Swamp Fox, you do have a couple of different uh, reticle choices, right? They got like a, uh, they have like the the, the, the mill uh, scopes and so forth. I chose the bullet drop compensator, which is very similar to the Primary Arms ACSS. Um, so at distance, they're going to work very similar, and also at distance shooting, you you have time to position yourself. To stay, you know, stabilize yourself, uh, and you're taking basically a, a very well aimed shot. Okay, so you can get a lot. You have a lot more time to prepare for that. Now, versus if you're shooting in one power uh, and you're moving and shooting, uh, trying to find targets fast, uh, that's a you know that's different. You know, so the the reticle uh, I found makes a very big difference in how quickly you're able to pick up that reticle. And get it on target. Okay, so let me show you the two reticles. Okay, I'll show you the uh, swap box first. Okay, so this is in one power. I'm gonna hold it out there. First, let me start off on the whiteboard over here. All right, so you see the horseshoe with the dot, and then you see the Christmas tree underneath it. And let me get out there into the woods. Now, you see when you go into the shadows how it, it kind of disappears. Okay, so if you light this up, get a twelve. If you light this up, you see the whole thing lights up, and it kind of appears like a Christmas tree. Now the nice thing is, even if you get scope shadow, you can still see that reticle, which makes a big difference when you're shooting. When you're shooting with both eyes open, the way that works is left eye sees the target, right eye sees the reticle, and your brain combines the two, and you're able to make the shot. So that scope shadow is not is gonna is not gonna be an issue um, if you're moving and shooting as long as you can find as long as you can find that reticle. Okay, now uh, when you turn it off, all right, now you pretty much have to line everything up right. Where are you there? Because if you if you get into the shadow, it's gonna complete, completely disappear. Okay, um, so let me show you the primary arms now. So primary arms, I'm starting about. So you can see that the circle, the, the the horseshoe is a little bit thicker, chevron's bigger. So when we get up there into the shadows, I think because it's 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 more compact, I think it's a little easier to to find it. Just because it's a little bit more compact and the and the horseshoe is a little bit thicker. It's still not ideal. Now let me put the light on. Let me turn the illumination on. So. Now with this, only the horseshoe lights up and the chevron. The rest of the tree doesn't light up. So when you get up into the shadows, I'm going to my left hand. So the illumination is very useful here uh, in one X. Um, particularly when when you're shooting in an awkward position and um, you're slightly off and all you see is shadow well if it, in that shadow you're still going to see the horseshoe and then the, the way that works is the right eye sees the reticle in the shadow left eye sees the target your brain combines the two and you can quickly make your shots even though you're offline okay uh, now if you turn off the illumination you you can't you're not going to be able to see the black etched uh, reticle in the shadow okay so you have to keep it on for that now um, normally when I shoot the ACSS which I've had for about three years um, I sh you know on the normal shooting I keep it off uh, and the reason is because when you turn it on it's really easy to forget to turn it off 
neither of these scopes has, um, you know, uh, basically has auto shut off and and uh, and shake awake like the red dots do. So it's very easy to forget to turn it off, and you're gonna run out your battery. So if I am shooting with the um, with the uh, illumination, what I do is immediately after I shoot, I turn it off. So it's kind of like you know, like you know, safety's on, safety off, take your, sh you know, just, you know, basically turn it on. Safety off, take your shot. Safety back on, turn the reticle off. Okay, so the the um, turning the reticle on and off for me when I'm using it is you know goes right next to working the safety. Okay, so basically it goes on before I turn my safety off, and then it'll go back off as soon as I put my safety back on. Okay, so that's kind of like a, a habit that I've developed. Uh, so that I don't forget to turn off the reticle, which I have done many times and run down the batteries Okay, so that, that's a major thing with with these um, So uh, as far as the reticles with the primary arms of uh, uh, um, ACSS right with that horseshoe and that Chevron it works pretty good in, in, in uh, During the day without turning it on because that horseshoe is a little bit thicker uh, whereas with the, um, the swamp box, you pretty much, if you don't turn it on, it's it's it, it's a little bit hard to see it because it the horseshoe is so much thinner, the dot is so much smaller, right? So you can see how that very quickly disappears. All right. So mind you, if you're moving and shooting, yeah, you're gonna see a little bit of scope. This is almost realistic in terms of what you would actually see. As you're moving around and trying to get, you know, get on your reticle. Now let me go back to the again with the just the edge. You can see how that's thicker, right? So as you're moving around, you see how how because it's it's small, it's a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact, a little bit thicker. I'm I'm able to pick it up a little bit faster. So that's the thing that stands out the most to me between comparing these two scopes. Um, the, uh, the primary arms ACSS reticle um, is, it will work pretty good um, you know, without illumination. Whereas the Swamp Fox uh, Arrowhead, right, that's the name of the Arrowhead. That's this one here, I've got both boxes out. I pulled this one out from a couple of years ago. So we got the primary arms. Oops, drop that. Versus the arrowhead. And then they call this the one that I got is the uh gorilla dot BDC. Uh, and I'm pretty sure about the gorilla there. Can't get you to focus. I'm pretty sure that the gorilla there refers to the guy's name that invented this rather than a primate. Okay. And then this is the primary arms. Now the primary arms, as you guys saw, off to the right there is a uh, a range scale. So you basically um, line up the height of a man to that scale on the right there, and depending on how tall he comes, that tells you uh, the range that you're looking at. The the issue is I've never had a chance to use that because I normally don't point the scope at people downrange. So. I haven't, I've never been able to actually use that. But anyway, uh, what I was saying, and this is probably the most important part of this video, uh, the the primary arms ACSS works pretty good um, without the illumination, okay? The Swamp Fox needs the illumination, I think, in order for it to work well. If you if you try to work with just the etched reticle, it's, it's, it's a bit harder, in my opinion. Okay, so... Uh, the reason why my main concern, right? The reason why I like scopes with etched reticles is, is normally I prefer red dots. Here, let me show you the setup. Now, this is really my preferred setup: the red dot with the magnifier behind it. Nice thing about this is I can take this off at night, or if I don't think I'm gonna be using magnification, and it lightens up the rifles considerably. Uh, those scopes with the mounts weigh about a pound and a half, so you, you, you know those guns are much heavier, and you're kind of you're stuck with a heavier gun. 
So I like this setup scope with the magnif uh, red dot with a magnifier. However, um, even though this is solar powered with a battery backup, uh, there's electronics here. Electronics can fail. So I wanted to have, uh, I, I want to have a couple of scopes that work with just an etched reticle. Uh, well, I, I do, I've got many scopes, but I wanted, a, I wanted another variable scope uh, that works with the etched reticle. And that's the reason why I ended up getting uh, the Swamp Fox uh, 1 to 10. Um, we got some, we got some, uh, some cloud cover. Let me show you guys real quick before the sun comes back out what these guys look like. Um, when you got some cloud cover There you go Okay, that's the ACSS All right, let me uh, put on the light okay, So as you can see only the horseshoe and the chevron light up on this and like I said if you've got scope shadow You know left eye sees the target right eye sees the reticle and you just get it on target and you'll be able to hit it now, of course, you guys are looking through the camera, so you're not going to be able to perform that. Uh, so get you guys on this one before the sun comes out. I think I'm a little too late there. Hold on, where are you? There it is. So this with with cloud cover. Try to get this table because I'm standing behind the camera here. So, it's a little... so in my opinion, this pretty much works best. With the illumination. Yeah, sorry, I was stuck at holding this behind the camera, trying to give you guys a view. But I did the best I could to make sure my batteries were off. Okay, so um, I want to do a demonstration for you guys and put these guns back together. Pause the camera so you guys aren't sitting there watching me put the guns back together. Hold on. Alright, so I'm going to do a demonstration for you guys at those targets over there. And I've got 22 conversion bolt in here because I'm going to be shooting that steel pretty close. So I'm going to be shooting this in an awkward position. Uh, first with, um, with just the edged reticle, okay? Just the edged reticle, no illumination, okay? So no, no illumination. I'm going to hold this out like this. Let me do it now with this one. Again, this is not, that was the primary arms. This is the swamp box. No illumination, okay? So what's happening is as I'm moving around, the larger uh, horseshoe of the uh, Swamp Fox is, is basically almost at the edge of, 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 of my scope, almost, okay? You know, just because of the awkward position I'm in. Whereas this chef, whereas the horseshoe of the um, primary arm, it's a little bit closer towards the center. So that's, that's functioning more like a red dot, even though I don't have the illumination on. So in that type of shooting with the etched, uh, with, with, with the reticle off, right, without illumination, the primary arms is, 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 is doing better. 
Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the illumination on. Okay, max power. Okay, big difference. Once I put on the illumination, there's a big advantage now because I can see, I, you know, in the scope shadow, I can find that big horseshoe. I'm going to try now the uh, primary arms with the illumination on. Pretty good. Uh, let, let me go back to the swamp box again. We got one last mag here. Again, this is with the illumination. So that was my first time doing that exercise with live fire. I, I ran through it dry a couple of times um, with, uh, you know, just looking through the scope. So I kind of had an idea of what to expect, but I didn't want to go through it with live fire because I kind of wanted to do it on the camera for the first time. So my thoughts are that with, when you got just the etched reticle, okay, the primary arms ACSS has a major advantage in the fact that it has the smaller, thicker horseshoe that you're able to climb more quickly and get it in the center of your target. Um, the, um, the Swamp Fox with the larger, thinner horseshoe, because we're not looking at the dot or chevron in the center. You can't see that when you're moving this fast, when you're moving around. So we're just looking at horseshoes now, okay? So the horseshoe of the ACSS is smaller, thicker. I can find that, get that on target with the... Um, uh, with the uh, uh, Swamp Fox, which has the much bigger horseshoe, what I found at this distance, which I was probably shooting about 40 feet where I was standing over there, um, it, was, it was like almost on the outside, like towards the outer edge of my scope almost. Uh, and it was a little harder for me to find it and center it. Um, so it definitely was not as easy to pick up as the smaller horseshoe of the ACSS. Now, when I put on the elimination, uh, they both did almost equally as well. Um, I ex did expect a major advantage for the Swamp Fox because the whole thing lights up. Um, but doing this for the first time live, I found that the ACSS was, you know, once you lit that up, it, it you know, it, it, you know, even if you had, it, it worked just fine. It worked just as good, really. Um, let me check my, make sure I turn this thing off. Uh, see, I forgot to turn this off. Put that video off position. Turn this off. Nope, left this one on too. That's how you kill your batteries. Uh, I hope at some point in the near future they develop, um, you know, uh, auto off shake away for these scopes because that's the thing I hate about these things having to remember to turn off the batteries and just constantly running out the batteries when I do use these scopes. Okay, so now that we did that test, let's go through this. I listed a couple of things here that. that I think are important. Um, so we got the, on the left side here, we got the primary arm. Actually, let me bring you guys a little bit closer because I don't think you guys need to see me anymore. Okay. 
All right, so on the left side over here, we got primary arms, uh, one to eight over there, the swamp box, one to 10. Um, now on the magnification, yeah, obviously the swamp fox wins because that's a 10 magnification uh, at, at uh, you know, at further distances, that 10 power is going to beat out the eight power. And uh, the other thing is I made a note of it down here. At distance, the clarity of the Swamp Fox is, is a little bit better, okay? Now, as far as price, uh, looking at today's price, um, the, the primary arms with just the scope, not the mount, uh, is listed at, uh, at about 370 at Optics Planet. Uh, the Swamp Fox is listed at about 470 at Optics Planet. So the Swamp Fox is $100 more, okay? All right, so that's, that's the other thing. That's, there's a price difference. Now, with the mount, okay, uh, we'll, actually, we'll talk about the mount a little bit. Uh, as far as a true one power, uh, the Swamp Fox is closer to a true one power. Uh, there is a little bit, there, I mean, it's not a perfect one power if you get indoors and you look at something that's straight, like a, like a straight line or something, um, you'll notice that there is, there's still a little bit of a distortion, but, but the Swamp Fox is closer to a true one power, although not perfect. Uh, on illumination, right, if you notice, I put three, three checks for Swamp Fox because on the illumination, uh, Swamp Fox just, does, I mean, it's way better because it lights up the whole Christmas tree. So on the illumination side, Swamp Fox is much, much better. Uh, as far as the light settings, okay, uh, Swamp, here's the thing. Um, with the Swamp Fox, between each of your, uh, of your light settings, let's say from one to... Uh, actually, let me back you guys up a little bit so I can get in front. I don't remember anymore what... So, back you guys up just a little bit more. So on the light setting... Uh, let's see, the highest power on this is a 12. So, so all the way up to 12, in between each of the numbers, there's an off switch, okay? So if you're like in setting six, you don't have to go all the way, you know, you don't have to go 12 clicks. You just go one click up in between. So there's, there's an off position between each light setting. Whereas with the primary arms, all right, uh, yeah, if you're at 12, you just got to go click one back to turn it off. But if you're like in setting number three or something, you got to go click, 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 click. You got to get all the way to the end, okay? So there's only one offsetting on the primary arms um, for the light setting versus the Swamp Fox, which has an off click between each light setting. So that's that's a big advantage to the, to the, to the Swamp Fox, okay? So that's why they got three checks, all right? So, uh, so the number of checks is like, you know, the, the more significance. Now... On, as far as no illumination, so if you're just looking at the edged reticle, uh, the primary arms gets five checks over there, uh, you know, like five stars basically, okay? So if you're working with just the etched reticle, primary arms is way better because the, the, um, its reticle system is just smaller, more compact. You can see it better um, when there's no illumination, okay? So that's a big thing, especially for considering what was important to me. Um, I wanted something, I wanted a scope that would, uh, that would work in one power that would not rely on battery or electronics. Now you might say, why not get just a, a, a one power, a one X prism scope? I'm planning to, uh, the ones I looked at, I didn't like primarily because the adjustment settings were a full one, o, one MOA at a hundred yards. So that means that like a three, uh, 300 yards, every time I click it, it's moving three inches. So uh, I, and I believe that, that they're planning to update that. So when I do find a 1X prison scope that I like, I will buy that too. But for now, this is what we're talking about. Um, so so um, uh, that's, that's where we are. Uh, if you're working with no illumination, no battery, no electronics, primary arms wins like five stars on that. Okay. Uh, as far as the weight and length, okay, the... Uh, the primary arms is a little bit shorter and a little bit lighter, okay? Um, the um, uh, the um, Swamp Fox is a little bit longer, a little bit heavier. We're talking like maybe two or three ounces, uh, you know, but it is a little bit longer, a little bit heavier. Uh, it has to be because it has, you know, it's, a, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a 10X versus an 8X. So you figure it's got to be a little bit more weight and a little bit more length involved to, to get you that. Okay. Generally, more powerful telescopes are generally longer and heavier. Okay. Um, 
uh, turrets, okay? With the, with the primary arms, you know, basically you gotta take, it's the, the covered turrets, you gotta take it off, very basic. Now, this is one of the things that I really like on the Swamp Fox. The Swamp Fox has, has uh, the turrets are on the outside, and basically you, the, the advanced turrets where you gotta pick it up to rotate it, then you lock it down in place. I gave it uh, three stars or three check marks on the turrets. Um, this is in line with what you see with like much, much more expensive scopes. And then what I did is after I got my zero on this, okay, because there's, there's like numbers over here. What I did is you put a quarter in there, you completely remove the turret and then reset it so that you have a base, right? So now at my, at my zero, that's on the, on the zero position over here. Okay. So. And the same thing with the windage on this side. So that's on the zero position because I'm able to put a quarter in there, remove this completely, and then set it down where I want it. Okay, so so it has a, like a base zero adjustment. So so there's really two ways to use the swamp box as far as um, um, shooting at let's say distance. Okay, uh, you can use the bullet drop compensator, right, and just use that. But also you can al you can also use the turrets. Um, where let's say you're shooting at 300 yards, you know, once you once you set your base, then you can say, okay, now you know you can play with it and, and figure out that let's say at uh, at whatever, let's say at 200 yards you gotta go two clicks up, at 300 yards you gotta go four clicks up. I, I'm just making up numbers. I don't know, but um, and then you can record that. So so instead of using the bolt drop compensator of the of the of the reticle, you can use the turrets to make adjustments like that. So, so there's there's two ways to use the scope, um, and I, I like that option. Now, norm, I expect that I would be using the reticle and not adjusting the deterrence, the, the but uh, it's a nice option that's there. It gives me something new to play with. Uh, so I really like the, the 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 advanced turret design that they have in this, and also these these turrets are also they're you know they got they got nice grips on them. So that's a big plus. I gave that three three uh, check marks. Okay, uh, on the mount for the mount. Now um, I didn't, I didn't put. Basically, both of these scopes I'm using the same mount. Uh, it's from Primary Arms. All right, it goes forward a little bit. It's not the extra long one because they got one that's extra long. It's the normal one. Okay, I'll show you guys up close. All right. So uh, and basically you've got your two pins here, your two uh, locks over here. So you've got this ring is just behind this, and the other one's way over there. Uh, the one that Swamp Fox offered, right, it was it was same price. It sits a little bit lower. Um, so basically, this is about a quarter inch lower. I didn't like that. I wanted to keep everything the same height. So I don't recommend you guys get the Swamp Fox. This is, I'm, I'm sending this one back. Um, but uh, I, I do think it's maybe a little bit lighter. But I would rather have the height consistent. Um, basically, I have this set right now. So about at one power... You know, that reticle is pretty much at the same height as a red dot would normally be. Okay, so that's where I want it to be. So I recommend using the primary arms mounts. Now, one of the things that you notice is they got these um, these nuts over here, right? You see how this, uh, you, you can use a socket. Don't crank down on this, right? Uh, because you're going to snap these, okay? One of the things I saw in the reviews for this mount is that a lot of people were saying that the screws were getting stripped. You know, just because you can use a, a, a wrench on this to tighten this up doesn't mean that you should use a heavy wrench and tighten it up that much, okay? Uh, this is, the basically, you want to finger tighten this. So so even though you got a, a nut there where you can put like a half-inch socket and, and don't crank down on it because you're going to strip it, okay? Uh, you don't need to go that tight. Uh, basically, pretend you're using an, an Allen key uh, and you just got the advantage of the... Because I did use a socket. You know, but I just knew to not crank down on it. I just used my fingers. I went as tight as I, you know, to a comfortable level and I stopped, okay? There's a crush washer in there. So that as soon as that crush washer goes flat, you're done. You don't have to keep tightening it up, okay? Um, what else we have we talked about? Okay, uh, okay as, as far as the, okay, so when you're looking at this in 1X, all right? And basically you're going to see a little bit of the, you're going to see the body of the scope a little bit. So on the swamp box, you see a little bit less of the scope when you're looking through it. Now, I put a check with like a negative there because I don't even think you're going to notice that unless you're like really looking for that, right? Because if I pick up either of these, either of these rifles, right, and I look at something, 
I really don't see the body of the scope that much unless I'm really looking for it. Okay. But if I'm really looking for it, I can tell you guys that this Swamp Fox, you can see a little bit less of the body of the scope. So, so, so the walls of the scope are just seem to be like a tad bit thinner. Um, for some people, that's an important thing. For me, it's not, it's not that big of a deal. So that's why I put like a check mark with a negative here because it's, it's, it's just tiny. It's, it's a little bit better, but it's just a tiny bit better, okay? Uh, next thing was the clarity at 8x. When I'm looking at distance, and what I did is, even though the Swamp Fox is, uh, uh, goes up to, uh, actually, this is Swamp Fox. Even though the Swamp Fox goes up to 10 magnification, what I did is I set it to 8 magnification, and I looked at something at the distance, and I kind of compared these two scopes uh, side by side at eight magnification and it seems like the swamp fox is a, a tiny bit more clear not by much that's why i put uh, a, a, a check with a negative next to it now it might be that i'm here in the forest you know looking at let's say 200 yards if i get out to an open field it i might it might look a little bit different to me uh, other thing worth mentioning is that the primary arms like i said i've, ha I've already had it for three years you know, there's a chance that maybe, I mean, even though the glass looks like it's clean, you know, like I said, I've been using it for three years. Um, so that might have something to do with the, with, with the fact that this, the, that the Swamp Fox, which is newer, right, it's a week old, seems like it's a tiny bit clearer to me. Uh, throw lever, okay. The Swamp Fox has this nice big throw lever over here that you, um, that you actually that's actually adjustable they give you like uh eight screws and there's three positions that like you can you know i put it in the center position um and this is nice because you can quickly shift it over to side to side the one thing i'm going to say is this is kind of a good and bad depending on how you use this because this is this sticks up a lot so this is going to catch stuff all right so this is going to snag onto things so you may not like this. You may not like the fact that this sticks up so much. That's part of the reason why they made this re removable. However, if you remove this, you know, this is, you know, it takes a lot longer to flip around. So that's why I put it on there. Now on the primary arm, they, they have a throw lever on here, but that's like really is set really low. Okay. Um, and I mean, basically it, it's, it's almost like it's not there. Um, my feeling is that they probably should have made this throw lever here just a tad bit bigger, right? I, I like the idea that it's low and it's not going to catch on stuff, but they probably could have made it two, maybe three times bigger, and it still would not have been this big. Okay, now this one also shoots straight out as opposed to the other one, which is more of a B design. So my feeling is that they, that, that um, primary arms or should have made it about half this height and maintain that that b design that they have right, you see how this has more of like a b design so they probably made it should have made it at least twice as tall maybe three times as tall and maintain this b design over here that probably would have been a lot very usable uh that's why so like i said as far as the throw lever yeah th there's a big throw lever on here it, by itself this is yeah this is way faster way more comfortable but but if you've got this in a sling and you're moving around you know, and, and that's catching stuff that can kind of work against you as well. So that's why I put like a check mark with a question mark next to it. That's kind of a preference, okay? And then lastly, battery. Uh, and I've kind of put an X to both of them because I think that the battery life is going to suck on both of them if you forget it on. Although on the Swamp Fox, I put an X with a negative because the entire reticle with the Christmas tree underneath it is illuminated. I think that's gonna run out a little bit faster, okay? But the, the battery situation on both of these is gonna completely suck uh, if you forget to turn it off, okay? Um, finally, uh, let me back you guys up a little bit more because I don't think you guys need to be that close anymore. All right, finally, let's talk about these two scopes uh, where I think they fall in, okay? So for shit hit the fan, right? SHTF. Which one would I pick? I would probably go with the primary arms um, because of that better etched reticle with the thicker horseshoe. Uh, if my battery dies, right, and I can't replace it, um, that's gonna be more useful. That thicker etched reticle is gonna work better without battery power, okay? Now, so that's for SHTF. Now, for 
every so and then over here i have distance shooting and normal everyday stuff okay so normal everyday stuff where hey if the battery runs out i got 10 more batteries you know uh you know ready to go so for normal everyday where you can expect to get all the batteries that you want i kind of like the swamp box um you know for distance shooting it's, it's a 10x so if i'm shooting 300 yards or 400 yards yeah i'll take the 10x um so that's how that's my feeling on this okay for shit, for shit hit the fan give me the primary arms it's got a better reticle i think that's gonna work better without power for everyday fun shooting uh i'll take the swamp box um because if the battery runs out i just i got 20 more waiting to be you know you know it lined up ready to go in there okay uh, also at distance shooting again you know if you're at the range trying to see how tight groups you can get that 10x is going to be a little bit more comfortable to shoot um and i do plan on taking uh the swamp the swamp box out to a, a much to a, to a longer distance uh, range and trying that out and uh, so you'll see a video coming up on that soon probably in a week or two probably maybe three weeks uh depending on what my schedule is like so hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, like I said, there, there's a lot of things to talk about. So I kind of came at it from a very specific direction. Uh, and the direction that I was primarily is interested in is, you know, yeah, you know, this is my this is my preferred setup right here, red dot with the magnifier. But in certain circumstances, let's say I don't think I'm going to be able to get batteries for my red dot. What's the next best thing? Um, and you know within that looking at variable scopes that's kind of where i'm you know that's that's the perspective that i'm coming at this from and at some point in the future i'll also get like a one power prism scope and we'll try that out as well uh, i just haven't seen anything i really like and again my issue with the one that primary arms has out there is that it's a it's a, 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 a one moa adjustment you know so so at 100 yards one click moves you one full inch uh, they, it should be at least a half inch. I I heard that they're gonna update that. As soon as they up that, they update that. I'm gonna buy it and we'll, we'll try that out. So thanks for watching. Uh, drop some comments below. Let me know what you think. What your experiences are. If you have different scopes that you're using, let me know what you think. Um, you know, I'll talk to you guys soon.